My name is Simona Deaconescu. I have uh, studied both film directing and choreography. I am based in Bucharest, though I travel a lot with my work. Right now, my practice is in between mediums. In the last years, I have created dance performances, installations, both participatory and interactive, video art and film. I like to work with technology, both analog devices and new interactive technologies, depending on the meaning and the purpose of, of the project I'm doing. I have a company structured more as a collective of artists called Tangash Collective. And in the past six years, I have been coordinating a dance film festival in Bucharest. Since my early studies, my practice has always been centered around interdisciplinarity, both as a format of framing my works, but also as a way of creating art in collaboration with people that come from different disciplines. My talk is about balancing acts in an interdisciplinary technology-infused or based performative work. I will shortly introduce three acts of balancing that I hope might inspire you or uh, shed some light on my practice. The first balancing act is related to layering and the need to prioritize one of the following elements, script, movement research, visual composition, technological setup, and so on and so forth. I think it's a bit utopic to consider that you can have them all since the beginning. And even if you would have the production means to do it, it might distract you from really building a strong basis of your work, which in the end is the core of your project. In order to emphasize this, I feel that I have to give some examples related to my practice. Retrowalk Decades to the Sun is a durational installation I presented in 2018 in several museums in Romania. It's based on the quantum theory of non-locality, meaning the ability of particles with the same origin to know instantaneously and mutually their quantum status, even when they are separated in space. The work was signed collectively by a visual artist, a composer, a contemporary art curator, and me. We discussed what would be the starting point, the first layer. So we decided that the best approach would be to talk with scientists from the Institute of Physics and Nuclear Engineering. While there at the Institute, our main focus was to understand how to connect the core principles of non-locality to concepts related to performance art. The main ideas on which we built the installation were working with residual energy, accumulation to contamination, and different ways in which the photons' experiments were affecting the structure of the physical space. The second layer was to explore these principles with movement and performativity. The unique aspect of this project was that all the creators were working with the dancers daily. The outcome was that each one brought their own method of framing movement, different than the choreographic one that I had. The performers were operating with music, visual and art theory tools shared by my colleagues and also having in mind our nuclear physics topic. Only in the end we added the layers of sound, video and object design. Our main concern was to keep the right balance and we did this by gradually adding new information. My second example is Zona Martiska, a site-specific interactive performance created in 2019 in Turin. If my first example started from a very specific concept, Zona Martiska started from a technical framework. A team of architects and software developers wanted to create a performance in which the music is interactive and responsive to the environment. They have never done a performance before, but they had a very clear idea about what sensors they want to use, what software and how this interaction should be. So, the first layer was to understand that sensor-based system and create a language and a dramaturgy that would fit the technological setting. We spent most of the time with learning what type of movement would trigger the best interactive response on music. Then, in the last two weeks preceding our premiere, 
the magic happened. The architects found a beautiful abandoned greenhouse on the castle grounds of Castello della Mandria. The space was charged with a very interesting history and we used that in order to create a dramaturgy and staging. If we would have spent the four weeks we had for movement interaction research on developing a dramaturgy, then we would have ended up in a space with an already made work that would have been unfit, losing the essence of a site-specific project. So, there are many different ways of working. You need to be fluid in your choices. Balancing act number two is about control. Because this is a very strong word, I would uh, refer to it by addressing two methods of structuring your piece. Scoring versus scripting. Scoring means creating structures for your work with indications that go from being just an abstract haiku to pages of very clear instructions about movement in space, intensity, language, and so on and so forth. The last two works I talked about, uh, Retroact Decades to the Sun and Zona Martisca, were built completely on scoring because it offered us the right frame that combined freedom for the performers and a reliable setup for the technicians. In my opinion, it's the best way to go when you want uh, work that has a kind of an unconventional format. On the other hand, scripting goes to projects that need very, very strict composition and synchronization. In this regard, I will refer to my first VR work, developed in the frame of a moving digits project. My proposal started as a stage performance in which a dancer and a fake AI explore ways of working with memory of movement. I named it a dance to be remembered as a self-ironical comment on what the audience expects out of a dance piece. Eventually the work transformed into a 360 video presented as a one-to-one -one interactive object-based installation that recreates the mind map of the performer. We chose to write a script because the project needed predictability from a technical standpoint regarding filming, the development of the animation of the fake AI and intensive production and post-production work. Without the script, we wouldn't have been able to have the base of a dialogue and to rehearse with a 360 camera. In order to simulate the future placement of the animation, we used a standing actress that would deliver the lines to the performer. The script was crucial for the editing and compositing stages of the project, as many people were working on the same material in parallel, sometimes even from different countries. The script was the backbone that held the work, without which it would have been impossible to have a productive workflow. To conclude, I would say that it's important to give yourself time to understand the purpose of your project and the format in which you want your ideas to be delivered. Choosing between scoring or scripting, it's an important decision that in the end will define the entire process of making your work. Balancing act number three is about working ethics. And it is related to the process of collaboration and uh, choosing the right team. What I'm interested in is working with someone and not working for someone. This small change of language sometimes makes a big difference and greatly influences the outcome of our projects. Most of the times you are asked, what do you want? Not knowing exactly what you want doesn't really make you weaker. Lots of artists start with something in mind and they end up with something uh, completely different. Great artists allow the work to be transformed and shaped by the process, leaving aside their big wants and, and egos. When you are working with someone, that question should also be put the other way around. So try to make every member of the team take responsibility of what they want, as you take responsibility of what you want and accept change. Mm, I usually choose to work with people that are better listeners than, than speakers. 
I'm looking for the ones that do not offer arguments like um, it's easy. I have done this thing one million times. Uh, I know what I'm doing. But for the ones that might say, I don't think it's possible. I like the project, but I need to see how I fit in. I need to think if I'm able to do something special for, for this project or not. Uh, why? Because in my opinion, great artists, uh, great scientists, great developers always have a type of childlike curiosity and they feel unprepared. Um, every project is new to them in a way. And I want my project to be a novelty and, and, and a challenge for them. Okay, I think that's the end. Thank you for, for listening. I hope I provided some uh, inspiring insight on flexible ways of working. There are many other ways of finding the right balance for a performance work that involves technology. But these are the ones that are meaningful and useful for me. So I wish you all the good luck with your projects.